This little film will discuss how living things and non-living things are fundamentally different. The organization of living beings differs in three important aspects from that of machines. The first of those aspects is the fact that living beings self-manufacture. This is called autopoiesis, or self-making, in ancient Greek. To self-manufacture means that you are not only producing all the components that you are composed of, but you also assemble them in a way that renders them function. To be able to self-manufacture means two important things. One is the way you are right now depends to a certain degree on how you were yourself a moment ago. So you have a certain control over who you are. And the second aspect that's really important here is that you have a certain control over how you interact with your environment. You are not purely reactive, but you anticipate. This gives you a certain autonomy from your environment, and it makes you an agent, able to initiate your own actions according to your own goals. Those goals and purposes, what gives meaning to your life, they are created from within. You are the one that creates them. Machines also have functions and purposes. But these are always given from the outside by an agent, the constructor, the designer, the craftsman, the programmer in the case of a computer. A machine cannot generate its own purpose. A machine cannot produce the components it is made of and assemble them. A machine is not autonomous. It is not self-determining because ultimately its goals and functions are always coming from an outside agent. So this is the first difference, fundamental difference, between living things from bacteria, plants, animals to humans in comparison to machines. The second way in which organisms differ from non-living things is the way they are embodied in their environment. Computers are designed to maximally separate their hardware and their software. This is because you want to run as many different programs as possible on a computer. For that, you need the hardware and the software to be independent of each other. Organisms are not like that. Their hardware is their software, if we can make this distinction at all. And the way we experience our environment, for this reason, is much more direct. Software, even if placed in a robot, needs to interact with its physical environment through hardware that is made outside the software itself. In contrast, if you think of genes in an organism as the software of the organism, they produce the proteins that make the cell, that produces the DNA on which the genes are encoded. Everything is based on everything else. There is no distinction between hardware and software if these terms make any sense at all. You, as a living being, are much more immediately in the world than a machine. You experience it much more directly. You are embedded in your environment, while the software of a computer is always isolated from its environment through its hardware. Because of all this, there is another really important difference between living things and non-living things. Living organisms, live in a large world. They encounter an environment in which most of the problems and the phenomena that we encounter are not well defined and are probably not definable. The first thing an organism needs to do in its world is to pick out what is relevant to decide which problems it needs to tackle, which phenomena it wants to notice and distinguish from the rest of the world. Think of a machine like a computer algorithm. It exists in a much different world. Its world is made of data and code and the architecture of its computer where everything is well-defined. It is a small world where everything that you can see is already there. The difference between a large world of an organism and a small world of a computer algorithm is crucial if you think about making meaning, making sense of your world. 
The primary task of the organism is to pick out what is relevant. For an algorithm, everything and nothing is relevant in its world. The problems it can face, the phenomena it can deal with, are predefined by the agent that programmed or constructed it. There is no meaning in such a world, no matter how complicated the algorithm will be. The difference in organization between living and non-living things is the most important one. But there are two other really important differences. The second one is about how organisms come to be. Organisms evolve and develop from an egg to an embryo to an adult being. Machines are constructed out of separate parts. This has important consequences. An organism is continuously regenerating its organization. A machine is what it is. It can only passively resist its environment. If a machine meets a challenge, it either breaks or it survives. If an organism meets a challenge, it grows from that challenge. It learns from that challenge. It improves through the challenge. This is the difference between anti-fragility or resilience and mere robustness or sustainability. A self-maintaining system doesn't need to be maintained like a machine. You don't have to tend to the parts and how to interact constantly because those parts and their interactions are self-manufactured. It not only applies to organisms as individuals, but also to ecosystems, communities, social systems, economies. It is the difference between surviving and thriving. To be anti-fragile means that you expect the unexpected. This kind of adaptation is the hallmark of true complexity, the complexity of living beings. One more thing, organisms take care of themselves, but that also means in return that you cannot just switch them off, take them apart, put them together again and restart them. The living process has to go on. It can be maybe paused, when animals hibernate or when we freeze cells, but it cannot be stopped and restarted. Finally, all of this has important consequences for how we interact with living systems or with those systems that contain living systems. Think about it as gardening versus machine maintenance, your car in the workshop, versus letting flowers grow. The motto for living systems and ecosystems is to live and let live. It is the difference between the maintenance of a mechanism and the maintenance of the conditions for a living being, for an ecosystem to grow, to thrive, to be resilient, to be anti-fragile. The secret to interacting with living beings lies in the nature of nurture.